Welcome to e-learning of PTU. This is Dr. Nanda Gopalan. I'll be teaching today the applications of the linked list. The topic that we are going to discuss is called as the sparse matrices. Now, in this today's uh, video lecture, I'll be discussing about how to store a sparse matrix in memory and how do we achieve this by using a multi-linked structure. Now you would have already studied how to represent and store a sparse matrix using arrays. Now but this video will explain directly the concepts behind how we could use the multi-linked structure in order to represent a sparse matrix and also how to store and print. And uh, towards the end of my lecture, you'll also be seeing uh, what is known as uh, the uh, demonstration of this particular uh, concept of sparse matrix using Visual Code 2019. I'll be just showing you the step-by-step -step procedure of how we could uh, design all these things in C and uh, run the program for some sample data as well. So we'll just move on to the PPT now. Let me just share. Right. So what is a sparse matrix? Sparse matrix is nothing but a matrix which has many zero elements. Now, when you have lesser number of, uh, you know, um, zero elements, in other words, yeah, uh, lesser number of zero elements. That means the non-zero elements will be very, very less. That means zero elements are more. So you can see here in this example that we have three, four, five, seven, two, six. That means two, four and six elements only out of this five by four, that is out of 20 elements, we have only six elements which are non-zero. So with the matrix, when you have more number of elements with zero or zero elements and lesser number of non-zero elements, we call this as a sparse matrix. So if we store this as it is, obviously we need five by four that is 20 locations. If, it, <clears throat> if each integer takes two bytes, that is 40 bytes we require. Now, it is not required to store all the elements in the uh, array or linked list because all that we are interested is only on the non-zero elements. So how do we store only the non-zero elements in the multi-linked structure and how we could access? Now, first of all, we should have the knowledge of, of how the structure, you know, the node structure of the sparse matrix will look like. So we are going to uh, store all these elements, non-zero elements in the form of a linked structure. So it's not going to be like a row wise structure where for each row you have a linked list something like that. No, it's not like that. The entire matrix should be accommodated or should be represented or implemented using a multi-linked structure. So we will see that in the next slide. But before that, we need to understand what is the node structure for two types. One is called as a header node. Another one is called the elemental node. So we have to store row wise the elements or column wise. In other words, we have a row and column and also the value for each of this non-zero element. Okay, so when I say it is an elemental node, we will be storing what is the row ID and the column ID of the non-zero value. For example, if I have this, if I call this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so similarly, this is a column 1, 2, 3. 
Then you can see here, three is zero, <coughs> two, three, the non-zero element occurs at the cell value zero throw and the second column. So, zero throw and the second column, the elemental value is three, right? So this is what we'll be storing in the elemental node. Now, when we come to the pointers, we have two pointers here, down and right, which is same as the header node as well. Okay, so this will point to the down. That means this is a pointer which points to the downward list. I'll show you that in the next slide, what exactly it points to. Similarly, it points to, in other words, is the column actually. Now this points to the row, that means on the right of the next node or the next element, which is a non-zero element. So we will just store only the non-zero elements for in each of these elemental node. So supposing if I have six non-zero elements, I'll have only six elemental node. Whereas the header node structure is slightly different where the down and right is same as the elemental node, whereas this next is not. Now we don't require the row column value, etc. We need only the pointer pointing to the next header node, uh, either on the row side or on the column side. So we will just see how we could use these two node structures in order to represent the sparse matrix in the form of a multi-linked structure. So you can see here that I have two pointers and here also I have two pointers and I will also have another, you know, header node, which is a common kind of a header node, single header node, which connects all these nodes, which is similar to the elemental node, but with a difference. Okay, let me not confuse you now. So we will just consider only two types of nodes to start with. That is header node, which has two pointers down and right. And it also has a next pointer as far as the this portion is concerned. So we have three compartments here or three fields here, whereas the elemental node has five. So row column value of the non-zero element and the down and right. So only two pointers here. Now here we have three pointers. Okay, now let us show, yeah, this is the slide which now gives you an example of how we could represent a sparse matrix in the form of a multi-linked structure. Take a closer look at first this matrix itself where I have the four by five. So this uh, actual matrix, if you see, there are, uh, sorry, five by four. So five rows and four columns. So this is a five by four matrix. Now, what we are going to represent in the linked structure, we will have number of rows and number of columns being equal. So whichever is larger, for example, here five, rows is the larger so i will have five by five set of nodes so you can see here one two three four five header nodes similarly one two three four five header nodes this is for the rows and this is for the columns now this is what i said earlier that this is the common header node for all the header nodes like h not h1 etc right now what we do is, so this is my column header node, this is my row header nodes. Now you can see here there are six non-zero elements. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six non-zero elements. Now you can see the first non-zero element occurs at zero comma zero. So you can see zero, zero, two. The second one, see nothing is there in this row, zero row. So you can see here all are blank. Now in the first row we have two elements that is occurring at 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 3. So 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 3. So there are only two uh, nodes or elements, non zero. And uh, you can see in the second row, no non zero element at all. So this is completely blank. Similarly, third and fourth. 
So third we have two non-zero and fourth we have only one non-zero. And these non-zero elements are put accordingly corresponding to the columns. For example, zeroth column we have three non-zero you can see here. Then you have the second column one and the third column you have two, three and one. So that's how you know the structure is shown here and how they are linked now. So we will concentrate now on the linking part of it. So this is my complete, uh, you know, the header node for the complete sparse matrix linked structure. Before we talk about this, we will just concentrate on the other header nodes. So as we have already shown, this is our header node. So left one is down, this is right. So this is down and this is next. So you can see here none, I mean no elements are there in this particular column. So this points to, that is down points to back because we are going to realize the entire thing as a circular node, circular link list actually. Okay, so similarly here we have down pointing to this only one node and so on. So this down points to this. So this left one is the down. And the right of course we are not worried because this is only a header node. Because when it comes to elemental node, we will use that. Now next is the one which points to the, so this is my next, so which points to the first node, which is my main header node. So what is this main header node? This consists of the number of rows, sorry, number of columns and the number of rows and the number of non-zero elements. You can have it row and column also, no problem. Okay, so uh, the dimension of the matrix and the number of non-zero elements is stored in this. And this also helps in connecting all the header nodes. Now, when you come to rows now, you can see here this header node is for the first row, that is zeroth row. So which points, that means next pointer points to this, which indicates that there is a non-zero element and since we don't have any other node after this so the right pointer of this right this is the right pointer of this points to the header node similarly the right pointer of this points to the header node of the first row and since we don't have any element non-zero here in the second row, so the neck, uh, you know, right pointer points back to the header itself, and uh, this is true for even this and this third one and the fourth one, right? Now, how about the columns? So, in the column, the header node, this is my down. Okay, this is my down, which points to the next available element, and this down pointer again points to this element in the next row. So these are all going to connect the column elements. And you can see here when there is no column element, this down will point back to the header node itself. This again, down pointer, etc. So the down pointer will connect all the elements in the column and the next pointer, that is, sorry, right pointer will connect all the elements in the rows, corresponding row. So now we can see that all are linked. I mean, every element actually is linked properly and we can go through this linked structure very easily provided we have to store, of course, uh, these pointers, you know, the pointers of all these header nodes in the global array. I'll show you that in the next slide. So how do we actually design the structure in C language or algorithmically? So here I'll show C language because I'm going to talk about the, the same thing you know, later on also. Right, so what we have here is the uh, complete structure being shown in the form of the uh, you know, linked structure. So now, how do we design the structure? Right, before that, we also should know how are we going to input the matrix. See, we are not going to input the entire matrix like this, but we are going to 
transform this in the form of a triplet and then you know input the matrix so what we do is first row here you can see the row column value is the triplet that is the input consists of m rows and n columns say for example five rows here and six columns and how many non zero elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so seven. so this is going to be my first row in the triplet form and uh, then give the row and column value of these each non zero element for example 0 and 2 is the uh, value for 11 is row and column 0 2 11 0 4 13 0 4 13 and so on for example minus 9 is nothing but 4 1 so 4 1 is minus 9 so the triplet format will be used in order to input this parse matrix to this multi linked structure well now coming to my original problem of how are we going to design the structure now this is the tricky part <clears throat> but we will handle it uh, in a easier manner see in the normal linked list you would have studied that we simply define a structure for list where we have int info and structure list star next or star link and we you know uh, declare a pointer to this p for example now that is very simple because we have all the nodes sharing the same structure but here it's not so if you look at the linked structure now we have two types of nodes as we have already said one is the header node another one is the elemental node so we have to make sure that we try to design one single pointer which points to either the elemental node or the header node how we can use union for that right i'll come to that later so we'll start with this uh let's assume that the maximum size of the entire matrix the uh, worst case scenario may be 50 right that's the size or the dimension why we require this because we are going to define as i said earlier a global variable called hd node with this maximum size which is going to store all the pointers it's an array of pointers why we have declared only single dimension here because we don't require row and column because rows and columns are one and the same that means the dimension is same even if i have my input matrix different like 5 by 4 five rows and four columns i am going to use this as 5 by 5 that means 5 is my number of pointers required so that's exactly that's why we require only single dimension next uh this is my entry node structure where i will use this see remember the node structure between the header node and the elemental node is common in down and right so this is also there here down pointer is also there in this so these two are common but this is not common so this is another structure which i am going to declare as entry node so it has row column and int value so this is a simple structure it's not a pointer it is a simple structure because it consists of three members i'll just call it as entry node that's all all right let me erase this okay now coming to the main structure that means the matrix node now we have down and right which is common as i said simply similar to your linked list you know struct list star next something like that now we have two pointers that is down and right okay down and right this is a self referential structure which points to same matrix node mn now what is this tag field tag now tag field is a type which is already declared as an enumeration type either is a header node or entry node so i will call this as tag field so my tag field which means tag is of type tag field which contains two enumerations header entry so depending upon whether it's a header node or elemental node i can 
you know make this tag equal to either head or entry that's the idea next the top portion here can be a pointer or can be a structure entry node structure since i am not going to use both together each node will either have this or that not both so we will go for union union is one where the memory is allocated only for one of its members so one see this one is for the header node that is next field because that's going to point to my again same kind of structure so it's a self referential so we get now three pointers but another member can be this one that is entry what is this entry it is of type entry node what is entry node it is nothing but this so now i have got two types of nodes one a header or 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 a elemental node so that can be decided very easy so now i have defined this structure main one so i can have a pointer to this called as type definition structure mn star man so this is my main for something like star p which we normally use it in linked list right <clears throat> so having defined this now the main structure now we can go for uh, you know the programming part how to read the matrix and how to print it now reading of course is quite lengthy and uh, printing of course is very easy but reading is not uh, straightforward because we have two types of nodes so whenever we get a non zero element uh, you know i'm sorry before we create uh, or add this non zero element to the matrix we should create first header nodes then start adding this so uh, the sequence of operations is quite lengthy so let us now go to the programming part of it how to read a sparse matrix in the multi linked structure so i will straight away go to the visual studio code 2019 instead of showing it here now we have this now this is my program uh, which has this maximum size 50 which is already defined as a constant value there is a largest one and tag field i have already mentioned this is a structure definition for entry node this is for the matrix node with a matrix pointer pointing to it and we also have a global variable hd node of maximum size okay right now we will use two functions here or we will write two functions one is called as read sparse matrix so this will read the sparse matrix and return a pointer to this so that we can actually print the sparse matrix so that's another function you can see here this is the print sparse matrix and the main program is simply that i read and then print that's it only two instructions so now how to read right so we have to read in first the number of rows and number of columns and the number of non zero terms etc so we have temporary variables for that declared here and then row column again temporary variables for the current row etc and we have the pointers to all this in order to create a dynamic memory and attach you know all that temp last and all so last will be useful so that every time when you attach a node it becomes easier you know last of next to the next node okay now we have we have to first read it the first row itself will be the number of rows and columns with the number of non zero terms or elements so first one number of header pointers will be the maximum i told you if even if it is 3 by 4 or 3 by 6 matrix we'll simply take the largest of it or larger of the two so we have a small statement here if number of columns greater than number of rows then number of <coughs> columns will go to the number of heads otherwise rows 
So we will select whichever is large. Now set up the header nodes first. So we have the temporary variable node for which we get the dynamic memory similar to any linked list. Then this I'll call it as an entry node because my main header node will be of the type entry where it will have the number of terms in the rows, number of row, uh, columns and the number of non-zero elements. So if you can recall this slide, it's very simple. Okay, so what we do is we will just populate that. So this node has got uh, uh, the members U under that you have entry under that we are accessing this row. So I'll just to go to this slide so that. Yeah, the structure definition or I can show it here itself. Yeah, so that means node is of type matrix pointer. So in that we are trying to access U dot entry dot because entry has got these members so dot row okay yeah so this one so my main header node the number of rows the number of columns and the number of non-zero elements so this has to be put in this initial main header node and if the number of heads is zero that means the first time you are doing it then node dot write is no that means it's a, a circular list that's it so later on we will just keep adding it so how do we add these elemental nodes supposing otherwise that means we are going to add so this is for the first time right so initialize the header node uh, for other header nodes of uh, you know the right and the you can see here the right pointer so hd node of because hd node is an array of pointers where it has got the maximum 50 that's the size which you are going uh, fixed so that's why we can use this for loop very easily and every time you create a header node you just point to the temp and we can make it as a circular one so that is the a portion of this for loop which will actually create all the header nodes uh, for whatever be the number of heads which we have defined okay next what we do is we will go for the current row which we will now try to add the elemental nodes and remember last will always point to the last node in the circular list so the uh, how many times you have to execute this this we have to execute for number of terms non zero elements because as i have already said that the matrix supposing if it contains five non zero elements we will have only five nodes the elemental node so obviously the for loop will go only for those many okay so now what we do is enter the row column value of that non zero element so row value column value and what is the non zero elemental value so that we have got from the keyboard and <clears throat> if row is greater than current row because uh, we, we just check you know what is the value which is inputted and whether it has gone beyond you know the current row then close the current row if that is true that means we have to close it so that we can you know uh, connect the last nodes uh, next pointer back to the header node so this i think it will not happen now because we have some nodes so we will see that it is i mean the memory is obtained for this new non zero element and this is an entry node so the tag field is initialized and uh, you know put the info field of the row value column value and the actual non zero value into this temporary matrix uh, node structure and the last of right equal to this is what i said 
when we have the last pointing to the last node it is easy to attach so this current node now will be attached to the last node so last of right equal to 10 and last will point to the current node so this is very simple if you have already done with linked list where the last pointer points the last node and a new node has to be attached at the end so last of next equal to 10 then last equal to 10 so that's what it's done so now new entry node is added and link it to the column now we have to uh, attach to the column as well that's what the you can see here yeah so supposing assume that i have i have added this entry node now this i have already done it through the programming sequence what i have mentioned but this also we have to that is column also we have to you know attach that is with the uh, down point okay so now we will go back You can see here down pointer will be attached to the temp and um, again next you know uh, hdf column you have next will point to the temp so this completes the reading of all the elements i mean non-zero elements and uh, attaching horizontally as well as vertically that is row wise and column wise now once you finish this then you can connect the remaining uh, you know header i mean the last nodes the next pointers back to the header nodes so you can see here uh, the right pointer of last to the header nodes similarly close all the column and link all the header nodes together as well so this portion is for that purpose then return the final pointer to this entire matrix because this node is the one which points to my original header node so this is the starting point which we have shown okay so there is one pointer which points to the main header node the in turn the header node will point to the uh, header nodes of all uh, row wise and also the column ones then we have the row header nodes connected to the uh, non-zero elements so both row and the column so that gives us the complete picture of the uh, you know multi-linked structure now printing is very easy that we need to just uh, you know scan through row wise and column wise you can see row and the column wise <coughs> and uh, print uh, the row value the column value and the actual value row column so it will print a triplet form like uh, how many rows are so first two printing will be how many total rows and total columns and total non-zero element and each elemental row and column and the value so it will look similar to what we have inputted which means that when i print from here in the matrix from the multi-link structure the entire matrix is successfully stored and we are able to get back so that's how it is uh, done so let me now execute this and uh, you know input some sample matrix and see what happens so enter the number of rows columns and the number of zero elements so i'll just say four four and four so enter the row values let's say zero two eleven then i have one zero 12 and 2 1 minus 4 then 3 3 minus 15 yeah now you can see here the number of rows is 4 as we already inputted number of columns is also 4 and what are the elemental values 0 to 11 you can see here 1 0 12 yes 2 1 minus 4 yes 3 3 minus 15 so we are able to successfully store our sparse matrix which is inputted in the triplet form to this multi-link structure which stores with the uh, header nodes circular and we are able to go through 
the complete structure and extract or retrieve the elements and then print it. So the program really works here for uh, the multi-link structure as per the definitions which I have already explained. So let me conclude here. Thanks for watching and we will meet in another session with some other topic. Thank you.